You do need Python 2.7. That's why I would put Drozer on Kali. Kali still supports Python 2.7. It's still on there. Um, at least it's on my Kali, and my Kali is, I think, 2020.2. 20, 20 you can also install Python 2.7 on any operating system. It's still around. But yeah, Drozer is using the older version of Python, which is a little of a drag. Anyway, um, so I wanted to just show you a couple of new projects, and those are 404 and 120. Um, 404 is probably the most interesting one from the Safeway app. Um, yeah, a lot of people continue to use 2.7, though, for exactly this reason. There's a whole lot of software that was written uh, a few years ago that still requires 2.7. All right, so this one here, I told Safeway about four years ago, and they ignored me. So you install the Safeway Android app. You can just use the current latest one. And then you can see the stored password. Now I should be able to do this on my phone live. So here's my phone. And I've got the Safeway app. Let's get rid of this. Yeah, there's the Safeway app. So I should be able to see the stored data on that phone. Let me get my command line, which is here. OK, so if I exit Drozer, and I go to ADB shell. That puts me on the phone. And now I go to data, data. And now if I do an LS, I'm going to see the a folder for every app on the phone. And to find Safeway, I do LS pipe grep safe. All right, so that's the folder that Safeway lives in. And so if I go in there and do another LS, say LS minus L, I'll see a few folders here. Almost always you find the stored passwords, if there are going to be any, in shared preferences. Sometimes they're in files, but usually they're in shared preferences. So if I do this, I can see what's in here. And by the way, this is kind of a fun trick. You can often find the secrets by looking at the time they were changed. When the app was first installed, most of these files were here. But the things that changed later were changed when I created an account and logged in. But anyway, you can often tell just from the name of the file. This looks like a Safeway file full of preferences. That might have stuff, good stuff in it. Let's take a look at that one. And that's just got boring things about whether to feature an ad or not. So let me go to my project and get the name of the file I want to find. Oh, I just did by flash. I do it the way you should do it. If I grep password minus r dot, that looks for the word password anywhere. And it didn't find it. Um, account pref. So perhaps I'm not logged in on this phone. So let me um, log in to Safeway. And I might have to look up my test account, but I think I remember it. Um, register just for you. Skip. Yeah, OK, I have to sign in. All right. So I test. I think I did test 12 at AOL. Just something I usually use because it's short. Let's see if this works. Well, it's not complaining. I wonder if it's going through my proxy. All right, let's see if I fouled up the networking on this phone. Settings. Network, Wi-Fi, Android, Modify. Ah, yes, it's going through a proxy and probably not the right number or something. So I just want to turn that off. Go back to no proxy. All right, now I want to go back to Safeway, which will be let's close these other things.
All right, here I am back at Safeway. Oh, I probably need to kill it and restart it. It's frozen in the middle of trying to log in. Okay, so Safeway. Skip this, sign in. Okay, test 12. Okay, it did let me in, so that's a valid password. So now let's try this. I'm going to make this big so it doesn't uh, wrap around so much. Okay, now if I do ls minus l here in the Safeway directory. Um, this thing here, let's do date. Okay, right now it is 3.16, and this file changed at 3.15, and so did some of these others. Um, so it might be this user profile pref, and it might be this one. Let's try the user profile pref and see how that looks. Just going by the name. All right, that's got some numbers. It's got my email, but it doesn't seem to have my password in there. Let's try this one. All right, and that's got random things. Now let's look for password everywhere. Grep, password, minus r dot will give me all the files with the word password in it. Oh, here we go. It's in account pref. That's what I wanted to see. So let's just cat account pref. OK. So what happened? The user password is stored. But that's not my password. That's somehow encrypted. And down here, you've got client secret. And you've got something called client ID seed. And all these look like random things. And you got something called private salts. So it looks like it's storing information that might have something to do with the encryption. And it turns out, the first time I did this, I spent a long time and I modified the app and I dumped data in the log to figure it out. But when I went through it again to write this project, because um, actually I did it years ago while I was traveling, I think in Texas or something, and then I kind of forgot about it. I wrote the project just a couple days ago. I realized you don't need to mess with the app at all. All you need to do is pull the APK file off the phone and then run it in JADX, which you can install on Kali or you can put it on the Windows or the Mac. And JADX lets you read all the DIT contents. And I think I've got it on my Mac. Let me try it here. If I run JADX, GUI, yep. You can just put it on your Mac or on your PC, which runs better than Kali because this is a graphical app. And now I can open that file if I can find the Safeway app, which I think I might have put in downloads. Um, safe. All uh, right, maybe I don't have it low, easy to find. Um, let me get it. All right, let me. I don't not in a hurry here, so let me get it off this. I've got the Safeway app on this phone, so I can get it off this phone. If I exit back to Kali, and now I can do cd dot dot. I'm just going to make a directory demo safe. I'll just try to keep things clean. Demo safe. And go into there. Okay, now I'm going to do adb um, shell pm path uh, pm list packages, I think. There. Yep, that does it. That lists all the packages on my phone. So now I can grep to Safeway. And so there's the name of the package, Safeway. And now I can do adb shell pm path to Safeway. This will tell me where the APK file is stored on the phone. And now I can just pull that. So adb pull that thing. 
and it pulls it off the phone, and there it is, 24 megs. Now I'm just going to copy that thing, which is almost always named base, and I'm going to put it on my desktop. I'm going to call it Safeway.apk. I'm just doing that because my Kali desktop is an easy place to copy things from. All right, so on my Kali desktop, I've got a thing called Safeway, which I copy, and then I paste it on my Mac desktop. Okay, now I should be able to open it from that JADX thing, which would be... Um, here's my JADX GUI, and I do File, Open, Okay, now I go to desktop, and there it is, Safeway. That's what I wanted to show you, because this is incredibly wonderful. And now you see down here, there it is working. It is opening the thing and processing it. It unpacks the APK, it finds all the contents, and it just displays it in a readable form, and it turns it back into Java code. So this is like, makes it far too easy, and this thing, It'll take a couple of minutes to process, as you can see. This progress bar is crawling across. I think it might be done, though. It's done when you can search. And here's the magic wand. This is the great thing. Um, you can search for... Okay, it's still working, decompiling. When it's done, you can rapidly search for keywords in here. And some apps are totally unprotected, like Safeway. We'll see later on. There are apps that are obfuscated. They take all these names and scramble them into unreadable things. But Safeway has not done that at all. So I can see all the packages here. Here's OKHTTP, OK which is a networking library. Here's Kotalin. I see a lot in packages. Not quite sure what it does. And here's COM. That's usually where the proprietary stuff is. And here's Albertsons. And here's Safeway. And so here's, here's the code that Safeway wrote. And here's a thing called Authenticator and Core Components and such. Someplace in here is probably going to be what I need. And I'll let this finish, and then I'll show you how I find it. And we can tell because back here, when we looked at the stored data, we got some names. So here it has something called um, User Underscore Password. So we can just look for that string and where it has that string will be where it figures out how to write this. So just looking for password would probably be good enough, but if there's too many hits, then I can do user underscore password. And find the part of the app that processes that. And we're up to 58%. Well, while I'm waiting, I'm just going to go to my... What I did here... Yeah, I show you where I went, but I didn't show you how I found it, so I'm going to see if I can find it. I think looking for a password or user underscore password will be a good enough way to find it. And it turns out that the code you find is so simple that you do not need to bother trojaning and modifying the app to figure out how it works. You can just read the code. So it unpacked it, it indexed it, so it can quickly search for words. And 86%. Is it done? Let's see if I can search yet. Guess not. Guess it's not done yet. Maybe it crashed. That's one thing about Java apps. They do crash now and then. Yep, I'm getting a bad feeling that it crashed on me. If this has stopped improving, let's check the activity monitor. I go to CPU. Yep, Java and JADX are not. Here's JADX using only 11% of my CPU, so it's not doing anything. And it seems to have frozen on me. Yep, but I click these, nothing happens. All right, I'm going to close it and start it up again. What do you, oh, here we go, a message. It's running low on memory. Okay, I'll say okay. Okay, now it's, it's back. Okay, I think it's working. So now I can go here. Yeah. 
Well, nothing happens. So maybe it's uh, 3.2. Uh, well, maybe I'm not going to have any luck. Class search? Looks like, uh, like it has crashed or else it's opening these other panes in some other screen where I can't find them. Anyway, um, I'm not going to bother with the demonstration because it's crashing on me, like all Java apps do, but you can find this thing called Data Encrypt Util in here, Com Safeway Client Android Util, and when you do, you can just read it. It's extremely simple. It takes AES is the encryption algorithm, and the key is this PBE key spec, and PBE key spec with 1000 and 128, this is just the standard way to extract turn a password into a key. It's called the Password Based Key Derivation Algorithm 2. It is a very standard algorithm. And so you can just reverse it with just a couple of lines of Python. And here it is. You take the password seed, you run that through this PBF, PBKDF2 thing, and that creates the key and then you use the salt with it to make the key and then the password is here and you just decrypt the password using AES. So it just takes a few lines of Python to do that. These are the most common, most standard cryptographic algorithms. So when they decided not to store the password directly on the phone, they did something very close to that. What they stored was the encrypted password and then they stored the salt and the, um, the seed. And these two numbers together combined to make the key for that. So they might as well have just stored the password in plain text. They basically stored the password here and they stored the components of the key right there too. And then they just used the most common algorithm with the most common parameters to do it. So this is uh, what I find in an enormous number of apps. They don't actually hide things very well at all. Anyway, so I was glad to have that back in here. And um, there was another project that I wanted to point to. That 120. Oh, 120 was important. Last time we were trying to do man in the middle attacks to see the traffic in Burp from a phone, and we had to go back to Android 5. And I checked today how hard is it to do on Android 8, and it turned out to be very easy. So I added that back in 120. If you want to install the certificate on Android 8 so you can man in the middle SSL. Uh, certificates, it is extremely easy. What you have to do is instead of going into the settings in the Android settings app and trying to install a user certificate, you have to install it in the Android operating system. And that turns out to only take a few commands. You export the certificate and then all you have to do is use OpenSSL, which is included in Kali by default, to convert the certificate to the right format. And then you have to calculate this thing called the hash of the certificate and you have to change the file name of the file to that hash value dot zero. That's what the built-in certificates in Android have to be named. And then all you have to do is put it in the right directory and give it the right permissions on the phone and reboot it. And after you do that, it will now be trusted, just like all the built-in credentials in the operating system. Oh, what's a good way for apps to store a password on the phone? There is no good way. You should never do that. What you should do is use a cookie. You never store passwords in a browser either. All you store is cookies. So when you send your name and password to the, to the website, the website should answer with a cookie, and then you put the cookie on the phone. And what's an even better way is to use OAuth, which I'm finding a lot of good apps do now. OAuth is where I don't even ever handle the password at all. I call like a Google API or a Facebook API and say, here, you keep the password and give me an OAuth token, and I put that on the phone, then I never have to handle the password at all. But that's what you do. Now, of course, and there's another answer I should give you. There is something called the Android Keychain, which is an operating system feature to put secrets on the phone if you really want to. It's like the uh, keychain you'll find on a Mac. And that's where you put secrets if you have to put secrets. But the best thing is to just think what you're doing and not put secrets on the phone. <laughs> You don't have to. You don't need to put secrets in a browser either. This is just um, sloppy logic. You know, people are not thinking through what they're doing. 
they're storing the password locally so they can pretend the password every time they log in and that's not how your browsers remember who you are there's no need for that yeah same thing with the iPhone if you want to store anything in the first place think what you're doing and you'll probably realize you don't need to store it but if you decide to put it in a keychain that's what it's there for then it is about as safe as anything can be but nothing on the phone is all that safe really you should just leave everything on the server and all you should store on the phone is like a a, a cookie which gives you access to the data on the server that's the logical way to do it however about half the apps I test <laughs> store the password one way or another on the phone I think it's going down a little I tested some more today and more of them I see now are finally using OAuth correctly which is a good way to do it then you don't even touch the provider anyway these are very good questions and I wanted to point you to a couple more projects there so I'm going to stop this recording <laughs>